drink beer, it's good for you. I'm empty handed and I'm feeling blue, and I'm gonna drink till the day that I die. Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I shall teach and discuss the targets we have in brewing and fermentation and also how to do what is needed to reach them. Let's start off now by looking at the different things that create these targets in the first place. Firstly we have our fermentables. These will usually be grain for all grain brewing but could also include sugars of various different types, malt extract or fruit for example. By using a beer recipe calculator we can build a recipe and the calculator will have an averaged out potential for all of these different fermentables. Do note that I said an averaged out percentage. This is vital to understand. In the case of malt for example, each malt company will release yield figures for their range of different grain types. This data will be based on what they would commonly expect from testing they have done. On this basis it is of course just an estimate. On top of this, there is also the level of mash conversion in terms of efficiency percentage which you need to predict in your recipe creator. A general overall figure for this is 75% brew house efficiency. More on this later. Your recipe calculator will also look at the amount of water you are adding, your mashing temperatures, the boil time, and estimate from these estimates what sort of gravity your brew will provide. It will then look at your yeast. All yeast is rated with an attenuation rate. This is the percentage of sugars that it is likely to be able to eat. Again, this is an estimate of course. With all of this information, your calculator will provide three important figures. And these are as follows. The suspected started gravity of your wort, the suspected final gravity of your beer, and the suspected level of alcohol that will be present in your beer after fermentation. So the first of these targets that concern us is the suspected starting gravity. This is simply the sugar content that can potentially be turned into alcohol by your yeast. As you have no doubt realised by now, this is based on many variables, many of which that are simply estimates. So how do we prepare that we can hit these targets within a reasonable percentage of tolerance? I will now run through my suggestions and advice. Use the same malt brand wherever possible, as this will help with consistency, and buying malt by the bag will also save you money long term. But the most important message here is to keep your brewing method consistent. To elaborate here, this starts with the grain crush of your malt, then goes into the way you mash and sparge and so on. The best way to go is to brew for efficiency of course, because then you will need less malt and have the potential to brew stronger beers than you will be able to get with less efficient techniques. Quite often a new or novice brewer will start off this way, but will then start to slack off thinking that he has mastered things and will then get lesser results. Be careful of this. I suggest you go for better technique over easier technique. Bad or lazy habits just reduce your brewing potential. The results that you get from your brewing are easily trackable, but if you are a new brewer then it is really best to get some brews under your belt first and track the results that you have once you are up to speed with your techniques and results. Most beer recipe calculators these days will allow you to import the actual starting gravity figures you have obtained from your brew and will then show you an efficiency percentage in terms of brew house and mash efficiency. It is of course vital to understand each of these and input the right data to get the right data back. Mash efficiency is pretty self-explanatory, but brew house efficiency is simply the overall efficiency that you got from start to finish in terms of gravity to volume. Do keep in mind that larger grain bills will give different results to smaller grain bills. There will also be a sweet spot for optimal efficiency in your brewing system. For the grain father, this is the data that I have from my own results. I have checked this data with other grain father brewers and they have seen very similar results. For those of you that use other brewing systems, you should be able to track trends and find your own data in time. 
So you can see here that the pipework used on the Grainfather brewing system will have an effect on this efficiency sweet spot. Once you have your technique right, then the Grainfather is capable of a very high efficiency. There is no reason why you cannot see a mash efficiency in the 90% region. This will of course be subject to variables, so no need to beat yourself up about getting a lower percentage. Getting high efficiency is not as important as having consistent results, because then you will be able to brew accurately to your recipe with a minimum of fuss. Once you have a dialed in process and you have seen the effects of different grain bills on efficiency, then you will be able to predict with greater ease. You can then convert any existing recipe to your predicted efficiency percentage and brew with confidence that the targets you have are realistic. You may still find that despite the best planning, you still fall outside of your gravity predictions. Then it becomes about choices. If your gravity is between 1 to 5 points different, then many brewers will not make changes. Of course, this might be different in a low gravity beer, for example. Anything beyond this, and many brewers will decide to take action. If your wort is showing less gravity, then you can make calculations and add more fermentables. This could be extract or sugars. Be careful of adding too much sugar though. If more than 20% of your fermentables are sugar, then this can have an effect that some people may not enjoy. This is purely taste-based, one part being that the beer can be somewhat drier. Malt extract is where I would suggest most people go for building extra gravity, because it is a like-for-like -like replacement usually. Another option can be to boil for longer and reduce the size of your wart, thus making the wart higher in gravity. The downside here being that you are also boiling your hops for longer and increasing your bitterness. On the other side, if your wart is too high in gravity, then make some calculations and add some more water to balance things back to the original plan. Again, this is not perfect of course, but this is a rescue. It is best practice to take three readings for gravity using different wart. If you are using a hydrometer, then ensure that the wart has time to cool down, otherwise this will skew your reading. The next target number to look at and understand is the predicted final gravity. This target is what we are looking to see left in gravity after the fermentation process is finished. Do be sure to realise that this is based on the yeast used. If you use another type of yeast, then this figure will most likely change unless the two yeasts are very similar. Another key point is that if you mash your malt at a different temperature to your predictions, then this will also change these numbers. Put simply, different mash temperatures will change the sugars and adjust how fermentable they are by your yeast. The higher your mash temperature, the lower fermentability you will have in your wort, and vice versa. Like for gravity measuring for starting gravity, making three readings for gravity using different wall is best practice and protects you against false readings for your final gravity also. Another important thing to note if you are using a hydrometer is that bubbles in your sample should be allowed to subside before you can fully judge the reading. In regards to fermentation, I would suggest you allow at least 12 days for a regular sessionable beer brew before you take your first gravity measurements. On this basis, take another one on day 14, and if there is no change, then chances are that you are safe to bottle your beer. Best practice is to see a stable final gravity for three days after fermentation. Never use the airlock as a guide to fermentation. An airlock can show movement due to air pressure, and some fermentations will be lacklustre and some can be explosive. The only way to judge a fermentation is by taking gravity readings. Submersible Bluetooth enabled hydrometers like the Tilt come at a premium price, but they are very useful tools for keeping a watchful eye on fermentation. I have a review of both the original and version 2 tilt on this channel. If you find that your fermentation has stopped and you are not at your final gravity, then chances are that your yeast is experiencing health issues. Action will be required to fix this. Please consult my fermentation guide on this channel for details on how to get your yeast back on track. 
If all attempts fail, then this would point at something being off with your final gravity calculations. As detailed already, there are many variables at play here. If you are then left with a beer that is undrinkable due to it being too sweet, for example, then I would recommend that you look at blending this beer with one that is high in bitterness. You never know, you could end up with something that you enjoy above all. Successful blending is a whole other topic, of course, and something that I will address in a video guide in the future, no doubt. This concludes this look at targets in brewing and fermentation. I do hope that the end message is one where you realise the amount of variables at play. Work on consistent and good brewing techniques, and above all, enjoy your journey into successful beer brewing. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. So if you did like this video, then please do like it on YouTube. This really helps me out and allows the videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. I have always got a lot of new videos planned for the future, so if you are interested in seeing my new content, then please subscribe for future content. If you have any questions on anything that I have covered in this video, or any other video, then please do not hesitate to get in touch with me via YouTube or Facebook. I am a member of pretty much every Grainfather Facebook group and more. Happy Brewing!